All right, so now that you've seen how firefighters look in all those special clothes and learned about some of the ways that you can help us out, okay, I wanna talk about something that's pretty important. And I know we talk about this pretty much every year, but I do because I want you to be really good at something. I want you to be really good at making a home escape plan. Okay, home escape plans, all they are are fire drills for your house. Okay, we do fire drills in school all the time. All right, the alarm goes off, everybody stands up, they line up at a door, they go outside to somewhere safe as a group, and then when the fire department says it's safe to go back in, you go back in. Well, the home escape plan is not anything different. Something goes off, a smoke alarm, okay? You go somewhere to get out safely, and then you wait until the fire department says it's safe to come back in. So all you're really doing is making a fire drill for some place that you spend most of your time. You spend only a few hours a day in school, and we do four fire drills a year. You spend way more time than that at home, and you might not even do one fire drill a year. So I'm gonna go through the four things you need for a good home escape plan, so that way you and your family can get out safely if you ever have smoke or fire in your house. All right, the first thing is a smoke detector. These are so important. Because if you don't have something that makes noise and tells you to get out of your house, you don't know it's time to get out of your house. If the fire alarm never went off in school, you wouldn't know it was a fire drill or an emergency, would you? No. Well, the smoke detector at home tells you that you have smoke, okay? And smoke detectors, and I hope you have a lot of these in your house, should be on every floor of your house. They should be in the basement, on the first floor, and on the second floor. They should be outside of every bedroom, Okay, they all look, some look a little bit different. Most of them are, they're always white. Some are a little bit thinner, some are a little bit fatter. Some plug into a wire in the ceiling. Some have batteries that need to be changed, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And some have batteries that are inside that don't need to be changed, okay? But they all do the same thing, and they all need to be tested. Now, we have to test a smoke detector every month. Right? We've talked about how smoke detectors need to be tested. Because if we don't know if they're working, we won't know if they're going to work when they really need to. So they have made it real simple. On a smoke detector, there's one button. There's just one. And when you press that button, it should make that noise. And that noise tells you that the battery is okay. okay? Now, in the, battery, in the smoke detectors that have the batteries inside that don't need to be changed, those are good for 10 years. You don't have to change the battery, okay? But if you press that button and it doesn't work, you're gonna need to replace your smoke detector because sometimes they don't last the whole 10 years, okay? Once a month, check that, your batteries, okay? On batteries, on smoke detectors that have batteries that need to be replaced, okay? Test them once a month. If they need to be changed because they didn't work, change them out. All right? If they do work every month, I still want you to change that battery. I want you to change it once a year. Because once a year, we'll make sure that your batteries are doing the things they're supposed to be doing inside your smoke detector. Pick a day you're going to remember. Pick a holiday that's special to you. Um, pick your birthday. Your birthday is a good day because you only have one a year. Um, you never forget it, right? In fact, I'm pretty sure most of you start reminding everyone in your house that your birthday is coming up maybe about a week or two or more before it. All right, so give yourself a great birthday present. Go around and change all the batteries in your smoke detector. Grab a grown-up, have them take them off the ceiling, and change your batteries. Once a year, pick a day you'll remember. Now, the, the smoke detectors that have the wires that come out of the ceiling, that, that clip into the back, those also have batteries in them. Because if you lose power in your house, you wanna make sure your smoke detectors still work. So there's still a battery in there. Once a year, that special day, probably your birthday, change the batteries in those as well, all right? Test them once a month, change them once a year. That'll make sure that your smoke detector is working. And that's the first step in having a great home escape plan, all right? Second thing you need for a home escape plan. You need, you know, your smoke detector tells you when, when it's time to leave, a map of your home tells you how to leave. You know exactly how to get out of your classroom. You know that there's probably a map right at the door. You know that when you stand up, you go to a certain door and you leave. Your home is no different. 
okay? What I want you to do is draw a map of your house, okay? The first floor, the second floor, every place that you would need to get out of if you ever had smoke or fire in your house. Label each room, your kitchens, your living rooms, bedrooms, okay? Now the most important thing is, is knowing two ways out of every room. Because if the first way out, and it's probably a door because that's the easiest way in and out of your room, if that door is blocked by smoke or fire, you can't go out. It's not safe. You need to find a second way out. And you need to know it before you need to get out. Okay? So, if you take and draw your map, and then with a big red marker, or crayon, or colored pencil, or whatever you want to use, make an arrow that points to your second way out. It's probably going to be your window. If you can't get out your door, okay? But it's really important to know it. And you have to know it ahead of time. Because if you wake up to your smoke detector going off, now's not the time to figure out how do I get out of my bedroom. You should already know. You feel your door. If it's hot, keep it closed. And find your second way out. It's probably going to be your window. If you have this map drawn and you remember where your arrows point to, you should be okay. You can use those, those windows to get out. If you sleep on the first floor, pretty safe, right? It's probably about this high, pretty safe to go out of. Maybe you have to go around a bush or something like that. But most kids sleep on the second floor of their house. Okay? In my house, we sleep on our second floor. So a window is not the easiest thing to get out of, right? They make what's called a home escape ladder. The home escape ladder is something that usually goes under your bed and when it's time to get out that window, it hooks onto your windowsill and the ladder rolls all the way down to the ground. You have a ladder that goes from your window to the ground. It's a safe way out. Okay, That's the safest way out of a, of, of a window that's on the second or third floor. All right. Um, I don't want anybody making a bigger emergency out of another emergency. We don't jump out windows. We don't tie our bed sheets together. You don't use your pillowcase as a parachute. None of those things work. And I know every year somebody will say that they can tie a great knot and they can climb out their window. That's not a safe way. The safest way is a home escape ladder. Okay? Part of your home escape plan is knowing two ways out and knowing how to use those two ways safely. So if you have your map and you have your arrows and you have an escape ladder that will get you out of your second floor window safely, you should be all set. That's your fire drill part of your home. This is your when, tells you when to get out, and this is your how. Now once you're out of your house safely, that's great. Congratulations, you did it. Okay, But we need to know that everyone in your house is out safely. Just like you leave your classroom and everybody goes in a group to one spot, that's so that your teacher knows that you're out safe. Grown-ups need to know that you're out safe as well. So at home, pick a meeting place. Pick somewhere safe away from your home that you can all meet so that somebody knows you're out safely and that fire department and police department knows that you're out. Pick um, your mailbox or a big tree in your neighbor's yard. Um, your neighbor's front steps are a good one because you're away from the house, you're somewhere safe, okay? Maybe the street light. Somewhere visible to fire and police personnel when they come to your house. Because that's the first question we're going to ask, is everybody out safe? We want to make sure they are, okay? First thing is your smoke detector. Second thing is your map. Third thing is your meeting place. And the fourth thing is you have to get help to you. We call a special number, don't we? 911. That's the number that gets fire, police, and an ambulance to your house when you have an emergency. If you have a fire in your house, all three of those, uh, all three of those people are coming, okay? And they're all going to have the same question: Are you safe? Is everybody out okay? Okay. If you have a great home escape plan, a fire drill for your house, you're going to get out safely. You're going to be able to tell the fire department or the police officer or ambulance uh, folks that you got out safe, okay? Now that you're out safe, don't ruin it. 
don't go back in your home. All those special clothes that I wore earlier and showed you how they keep me safe, that's what I wear to go back into your house, to get out whatever you need. Let me know what you need to get out, okay? If you have a pet that's in your house, let me know. Let me know the pet's name, what it looks like. I will go in and try and find your, your pet for you. I get it, I have a pet too. They're part of your family. But you can't spend time trying to get out of your house looking for your pet. You only have, even with a great home escape plan, you only have a little bit amount of time to get out of your house safely. Don't spend it trying to get things that you want to take out. Don't try and grab your backpack. Don't try and grab your special toy, your laptop, your tablet. Go looking for your pet. Pets have a pretty good way of trying to stay safe in a fire. Okay? Pets get scared too. They're going to try and find a safe place to, to, to go until someone can come get them. Cats do a remarkable job of finding places to stay safe. Dogs will probably follow you out of the house. Okay? So please don't go back in the house trying to get your pet. Let me know your pet's name. Let me know what it looks like. I'll go in and find it for you. Okay? Special clothes keep me safe. Your pajamas, your regular clothes that you wear every day, they don't keep you safe. And you got out safely. I don't want you to ruin it by going back in. Okay? When you call 911, call that number from outside your home. Because when you're inside, you're spending time that you could be using to get out safe. Grab your phone, head outside, and call 911. Don't spend time looking for your phone. If you can't find it, that's okay. When you go to your neighbor's house, knock on the door. Tell them I need to use your phone and call 911. I have a fire in my house. Your neighbor's probably going to let you do that. Okay? I know my neighbor would. All right? That's how you can help firefighters by being safe, by putting together a great home escape plan. Now, I know from a couple of years talking to you guys that some of you already have those home escape plans, and that's great. Thank you so much for getting those done. For those of you that don't, I think it'd be a great idea if you could sit down tonight or tomorrow night, sit down with your family, get a big piece of paper laid out on the table, draw a map of your house, get all your crayons and markers and colored pencils out. Draw those big red arrows to the ways to get out of your home, okay? Everybody needs to know where to go when they get out. Is it the tree? Is it the mailbox? It has to be one spot. Because if you go to the mailbox and all the grown-ups go to the front steps next door and your sister goes to the tree fort in the backyard, no one knows if everyone's out safe. Okay? That one meeting spot, that one place, that's where you're going to know that everybody got out of your home safely. Okay? Now that you have that home escape plan, practice it. Remember I said we do four fire drills a year in your school? Practice four times a year your home escape plan. Practice one of those at night, because your house looks a little different at night. I promise you, when it's really dark out, you're probably going to forget that that table that you walk by every day and never bump into, you're probably going to bump into it in the middle of the night. Practice makes perfect. If you play a sport, you know how important practice is. No one shows up on game day, right, ready to play their sport. They don't know who to pass to. They don't know what goal to shoot on. Okay? They practice. Practice your home escape plan. Because if you have smoke or fire in your house, that's game day. That's when you need to know what to do. It's not the time to figure out how I get out. It's not the time to figure out where I go. That's the time to put that great home escape plan to use. Okay? If you never need to use it, great. But practice it four times a year. That's how you can help you, your family, and firefighters stay safe. Okay. Thanks so much for listening to me today. I really enjoyed talking to you about fire safety. I really enjoyed talking about how I stay safe so that I can help you. And most importantly, how you keep yourself safe. Thank you very much.